Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number 52 in our epic, in our legendary new series of Arduino tutorials. What I'm going to need you to do today is pour yourself a huge mug of iced coffee. I'm going to need you to get out your eLego Super Kit. And if you don't have one, you can pick up one in the description down below, a link in the description down below. And what we're going to do today is we are going to create a portable temperature and humidity sensor uh, based on the DHT11 sensor. Now we've done a lot of this work in lesson number 51. Uh, I think in lesson number 50, you in lesson number 50, we got the DHT sensor connected and working. Then in lesson number 51, we had the uh, <clears throat> sensor working with the Arduino and an LCD display. We were working our way to being able to untether and have a standalone unit that we could walk around with. Now in lesson number 51, I gave you the homework assignment of creating a portable unit that you could walk around with and power yourself. And I gave you a hint that you would have the components in your super starter kit to make this project mobile. Who was successful? Who was successful? If you were successful, leave a comment down here and don't cheat, right? Don't cheat. Don't do this if you did it after I showed you how to do it. But if you did it on your own before I showed you how to do the homework, leave a comment below. I am legend. Okay, I am legend if you did this on your uh, on your own. Let me show you how to do it. Uh, again, in this build, uh, I'd suggested in the last video that the time had come to go ahead and get an Arduino Nano because if you use the Nano instead of the uh, Uno, which comes with the kit, you can do a much neater build. You see what a nice job we did on this build. It doesn't have the loopy wires going everywhere. It is pretty easy to get, uh, you know, to keep it neat if you can plug an Arduino directly onto the breadboard. All right, now, what do you need in order to make this mobile? Well, let's go back to kind of where we left off in the last lesson. We had this Arduino plugged in like this and plugged in like that. Hopefully this thing is still working. Hopefully, yeah, there it goes. Okay, maybe you can't see it. Maybe I need to turn the brightness up a little bit. Okay, there you go. So you can see that this thing is working when we are tethered to the desktop. But the only thing that this USB connector is doing for you now the only thing you're getting out of this is power. And so what we want to do is we want to power it without that. One option would be to plug the USB cable in and the other end of it plugged to a USB power bank, like one of the little phone charger power banks, and you could walk around with that. But what I'm going to show you is this amazing component, which is the power supply which you can use to power a portable pro uh, project. What you can see, if you look carefully, let me see if I can go to a different view here. Maybe you could see this better, hopefully. Uh, yeah, and we're getting pretty good focus today. If you look up here, it says that the VN needs to be less than 12 volts. Well, what's convenient, 9 volts is less than 12 volts. Guys, you see now in math class how they kept harping on you about the less than and greater than sign, which is which. <clears throat> Why is that important? Because you need to know that this says that you want a voltage less than 12 volts. Because if you misread that and put 25 volts on, very likely you are going to burn everything out. But what is very convenient, what is very convenient is a 9 volt battery is less than 12 volts. And so you can power this with a 9 volt battery and then this can power your entire up. And I need to give you kind of a word of caution about what we're going to be doing here. In this particular case, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be not only uh, powering our sensor and our LCD from this regulated power supply, but we're also going to be powering the Arduino. And we will be doing that by coming over here and getting the regulated 5 volts 
off of this regulated power supply through the 5 volt pin. And for a simple project like this, it's usually not going to be a problem. But uh, in general, powering the Arduino from uh, these external pins, whether you're using VN or 5 volts or the USB, it's something you want to be very careful about. And uh, what I'm telling you is on this one, there's really uh, uh, not too much of a problem by powering the Arduino off of the 5 volt pin because this is regulated. One word of caution though is you do not want to connect the USB if you have the five if you're powering through the 5 volts because then you're trying to power it through the USB and trying to power it here at the same time and it's like connecting two power supplies together and you don't want to do that. For this particular case you can uh, do it this way and probably not have a problem. In general the safest way to power the Arduino is through the USB or if you do uh, not have uh, a USB and you want to power it with something other than regulated 5 volts if you go through this barrel connector that barrel connector will then go through the Arduino's 5 volt uh, regulator and then you will not have a problem. What we're kind of doing here is we're relying on the fact that this power supply has a uh, has its own regulator and therefore we are pre-regulating the power and bringing it directly into the 5 volt pin. So just a word of caution be really careful about powering the Arduinos uh, from an external power supply. Maybe something we need to do more of a lesson on later but for today, just know that this is pretty much uh, uh, not going to cause problems as long as you don't come in and plug in the USB. It works just good enough that you sometimes wait for it. Okay, so we're going to take this and we're going to plug the 9 volt battery in through the little uh, cable that comes with the kit. But now there's something very important and you need to look at there are two sets of outputs here. There is a plus output and a minus output at the top and there is a minus output and a plus output at the bottom. Okay, the thing that you have to see though is what you get out of this can either be 5 volts or 3 volts depending on where this jumper is set. And if you remember on our build in the earlier uh, lesson, in lesson 51, that we were operating with power and ground at both the top and the bottom of the board so that we could just grab whichever one was convenient. Well, what that means is that means that you've got to make sure that both of these jumpers are set to 5 volts. And the way mine came is one of them is set to 3 volts. So the one that's set to 3 volts, I need to take that jumper off and I need to connect it where it says 5 volts. Okay, so let's look. You see that's set for 5 volts. Then we come over here. This one's set for 5 volts. Now, we are ready to plug this in, okay? And what would be very nice and very natural would be to just plug it in there like that, okay? And look at that. I have all of the pins plugged in, which makes it nice and secure, nice and uh, nice and uh, mechanically secure. But this is like, I'm going to kind of give you a heads up here, and these are the things that happen in real projects when you're building them. If you look at this, can somebody tell me the problem? If you look at that, can somebody tell me the problem? All right, or maybe look down here. Somebody tell me what my problem is. Okay. If you see the problem, I want you to put down below a comment, I am legend in troubleshooting, okay? I am legend in troubleshooting. Do you see what the problem is? Is that this top row was labeled plus, so we did our build based on it being plus, and this second row here was labeled minus, the blue line was labeled minus, so we made that minus, and Similarly down here, this bottom row was labeled minus, so we made it a ground. And then the second to the bottom row, we made a plus. What is wrong if you look at the polarity coming out of this power supply? 
both there and there. It's backwards, okay? So what options do we have? Well, one option is I could come across and swap. So this positive would need to go to ground because that's going to become the, you know, that's going to become our new positive. And then all along here, it looks like I would have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine that I would need to reverse, nine connections that I would need to reverse. And then down here, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I would need to go swap all of those so that this configuration would work. All right, now that's one way I could do it. And I don't want to bore you with that, but you could do that if you wanted to. Or what I can do is I can take this out and flip it this way. And I can still get it plugged in like that. OK, and now let's look at it very carefully. Now, if you can see, now the positive is on the top, which matches. The negative is the row below it, which matches. And then here, the positive is the second to the bottom row, and the negative is the bottom row. So by putting it in this way, it's going to work. Now, why do I not like this as much? Well, the reason I don't like it as much is I'm only getting one of the sets of pins in. Now, that's OK because they both do the same thing. But I'm only getting one of the sets of pins in and not the other. And over here, I'm getting similarly one set in and not the other. But one set will work. What it doesn't give me, though, is it just doesn't give me the mechanical stability that I had if everything was plugged in together. So what's one of the things that we learn here? We learn that you really kind of want to do all your layout at the same time, and you want to avoid ending up with a precarious situation like this. I also think that I would have liked to have had a little bit more room here. So maybe in my build, uh, bringing uh, this a little closer to here and this a little closer to here. I think I could have squanched a little bit more room there to get this all working. OK, but now uh, we talked about you've got to be very mindful about how you plug this in so that the voltages that you are getting out, so that the voltages that you are getting out match your build on the breadboard as far as which rows you're using as a positive and which rows you're using as a negative. And trying to get this to focus. Let's see if I hold it this way there. I think it's going to work. All right, there. That's a good, that's a good focus. OK, so you can see you've got to make sure that you're aligned your build with your power supply. And in this case, plugging it in in this orientation, it does work. The other thing that you've got to make sure is, is that you're using a suitable power to this. And we can see that a 9-volt battery would work. So let's see if we can hook this up. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to plug the battery in. OK. And then what you can see is the battery will plug in here, like this. And now we have it all hooked up. You don't see any signs of life, because what I want you to see in this power supply, you've got an on-off switch. So let's turn the on-off switch. Let me see here. OK, here you can see it all. I'm going to get further out of your way like this. OK, so we're going to come in, and we're going to turn the switch on. Good, we're seeing signs of life. And boom! Boom! Did you see that? Look at that. What is something that you notice about this if I back off? What is the thing that you notice about this as I back off? You have a completely standalone system. Do you see that? It is standalone because you don't have any wires coming in at all. No wires coming in at all. And I want this thing to focus. Sometimes if I'll just do that, okay, now, 
All right, so you see no wires, no external connections at all. We are at this point, we are absolutely, positively, completely portable. Okay, we are completely portable. So like if I pick it up here, look at that. Okay, there you go. It is hard to get this like I want to see it. Boom. Excellent. Okay. Now what else is nice? What else is nice is I have an on-off switch. Okay. I have an on-off switch so I can turn it off. Now you're probably wondering why this looks like it has a hole in it. Well, that's because the wires are green and it is... Uh, acting, uh, you know, responding to the green screen software. So ignore the apparent hole there. I assure you there's not a hole in the, in the project. But let's say that I come up here and you can see it and I can turn it off and I can turn it on and it boots up in just a few seconds and then starts giving very nice readings. So guys, this is a huge step forward. This is a huge step forward in our project because this is the first time that we've actually made anything that starts looking like something that you could really do something with. So what would be the next step in a project like this? The next step to me would be to get out your 3D printer, go to Fusion 360 and start printing out a little bit of a box for this. And so you could make a box and put this in it. I'm not going to do it because this last series of lessons is on the Arduino. If you want to take the project to that step, go over to my series of lessons on Fusion 360. Learn Fusion 360 in really in an hour or so, a couple of hours on those uh, on those homeworks, and uh, you would be able to design a nice case for this, a nice box for it. The other thing that I think I would be doing would be I would be going to one of those perf boards and instead of using a PC board I would use a perf board and I would really pack this stuff in there as close as I possibly could and then I would wire wrap and if you guys have not wire wrapped go and look at uh, the wire wrapping tutorial in my old set of Arduino lessons. Go back to the old set. Just search on you know YouTube my name and wire wrapping and I'll show you how to wire wrap. Wire wrapping would be the next place that you could go with this. And then if you uh, got it wire wrapped, the next thing that you would do after that is you can actually design your own little PC board and then you could solder these things in place and then have a case. And then you would have like a really fairly, uh, fairly advanced uh, little working prototype. What I really like about the eLEGO kit, I really like the uh, power supply because it makes it so easy to make a project where you can just go, uh, you know, you can just go, go mobile. Uh, fairly easy. So this has been kind of a fun project. I hope you guys have played along at home. Uh, I would really like to hear your uh, I would really like to hear your comments down below. Let me know if you did this. Let me know how it worked, if it worked, if it didn't work. And you realize that I am going to go insane over this focus issue. Sometimes if you just take the focus off and then sometimes not. Okay, there we go. That looks pretty good. Okay, so give me a comment down below about how this project went. And I think this really opens up a new capability for us that we're not just spending our lives with these big, uh, you know, loopy wires that go everywhere, but we start getting things that look a little bit more like a prototype that you could actually use in the, use in the field. Uh, I've had fun with these lessons. If you guys have enjoyed them, think about giving us a thumbs up. Also, guys, if you have not done it yet, go in the link below and get yourself a Nano because as we take projects to that final stage, we can do the early work on the Arduino Uno. But when we get to the point of wanting to build a little standalone unit like this, we really want to have a Nano that we can, uh, that we can use. Okay, appreciate a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Be sure to ring the bell. Click the little bell when you subscribe so that you'll get notifications when new material has come out on this channel.
share this with other people, man. If you're if you're learning and finding this useful, spread the word. Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.